The uh, last problem of this type says to verify that the Lapl Laplace transform of f of x, f of t equals cosine a t is s over s squared plus a squared, where s is greater than zero. So we want to uh, apply the definition of a Laplace transform. I get the Laplace of cosine of a t is the integral 0 to infinity e to the negative s t times cosine a t dt. Uh, we want to do integration by parts. Let's let u equal e to the negative s t. Now let's do it the other way. Let's let u equal cosine a t. That way du derivative of cosine is negative sine and derivative of a t is a. So I'm going to get negative a sine a t dt and dv is e to the negative st dt. So v is, if I integrate that, I get e to the negative st divided by negative s. Okay, so I get uv, uh, that gives me cosine at times e to the negative st divided by negative s minus, actually I need to put my limits on there. Limits go from uh, 0 to limit as t goes to infinity and then minus vdu. 0 to infinity e to the negative st divided by negative s times negative a sine a t dt. Now I'm going to take some of those signs away. I'll take these two signs away. That makes it positive. This sign makes it a negative again. Uh, I can bring out some of the constants. The a over s can be brought out. I can simplify this first part. Uh, here, if s is greater than 0, that's to ensure that this exponential part converges. And cosine of a function is always between negative 1 and 1, so that uh, we don't have to worry about uh, that going to infinity and canceling out the exponential part. The limit as t goes to infinity of this function is going to be 0 and then at 0 I'm going to get cosine of 0 I'll just write that out cosine of 0 is 1 e to the 0 power over negative s cosine of 0 is 1 e to the 0 power is 1 so I'm going to get negative 1 over s for my first term and that's actually being subtracted off so that should be a minus, it'll give me a 1 over s. And let me see, this was ultimately it was a negative. I'm going to bring up my constants, a over s. And I'll have the integral 0 to infinity e to the negative st times sine at. So that gives me 1 over s minus a over s. And for this integral, I'll integrate by parts. So last time, I let u equal cosine at. Now I'm going to let u equal sine at. go. 
u is equal to sine at and so du derivative of sine is cosine at times the derivative of at gives me an a dt and I'm gonna let my dv be the same thing that it was before my e to the negative st dt so v is e to the negative st divided by negative s and so when I come back here to my integral and uh, I have my a to the s factored out I get my u times v that's sine a t times e to the negative s t divided by negative s take that to the limits minus v d u my braces. Okay, so simplifying, let's see what I have. 1 over s minus a over s. When I apply my limit as t goes to infinity for this term, again because of that e to the negative st, this will go to 0. Minus, when I apply the 0, I get sine 0 e to the 0 power divided by negative s. Now sine 0 is 0 so all of this is going to drop out for this term. Then I have minus uh, here I can carry one of the negatives out that'll change that to a plus I can bring out an a and an s and I'll be left with the integral 0 to infinity e to the negative s oops, e to the negative st cosine at dt close that okay so this first part drops out and So I only have one term here. I have the negative a over s times a over s. Let me combine those to get negative a squared over s squared times this integral. And this integral is important because if we compare it to the initial integral, e to the negative st cosine at, that is the initial integral. So what we want to do is we want to uh, I'm, I'm going to bring this term down and that gives us that this integral is equal to 1 over s minus a squared over s squared times that same integral. If I add a squared over s squared to both sides, I'm going to bring this over, well, let me add it here, plus a squared over s squared I'll add that to the left side and adding it to the right side is going to cancel it out over here. When I add it to the left side I want to have like terms so I'm going to put it in s squared over s squared so I have common denominators and then adding these together gives me s squared 
plus a squared over s squared times the integral is equal to 1 over s. And so to solve for this integral, I need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction by s squared over s squared plus a squared. That way these cancel out. It leaves me with the integral is equal to 1 over s times s squared over s squared plus a squared. And here one of the s's can cancel out. So I'm left with s over s squared plus a squared, which is what we wanted to show, s greater than 0.